In this lecture, we'll be talking about how to create a custom ESXi installation image. There are several use cases for doing such. First, and most commonly used cases, if you need to include some specific drivers to the installation itself. In our case, we are doing that because the default installation image does not include necessary drivers for our network adapters. Sometimes you must include a storage driver if you are using some specific storage adapter as well. Second use case is, if you want to build some golden installation image for your new ESXi servers. This may be because you want to include some patches so you don't need to update ESXi server once installed using Update Manager, or you have some internal components that needs to be part of the image. For example, in one project I was working on, we were opening some specific TCP ports so we can connect through VNC to the virtual machine itself. One approach was to set up a custom script that was invoked once the server was booted up, but we have realized that sometimes when administrator installed the new ESXi server, he forgets about that and thus the VNC connection was not working at all. At the end, we have decided to create a custom VIP package that were included in the ESXi installation image itself. For creating a custom ESXi installation image, you need a Windows-based workstation with VMware PowerCLI installed. PowerCLI is extension to standard Microsoft PowerShell interpreter and it contains necessary routines to work with VMware vSphere. There is a version for Linux and Mac as well, but unfortunately, it contains only base vSphere routines, so you can access the environment, but the host image routines that are needed for creating custom image are not included yet. First thing that we need is VMware installation depot zip file. That file can be downloaded from VMware on the same page you get the ESXi installation ISO file. You just need to select that offline depot for download instead of the default ISO image. Second part are your custom drivers that you would like to include in the image itself. I have also created PowerShell script that will do the whole work for you as I will show you at the end, but right now we'll do everything step by step. So let's open a PowerCLI. First, we would like to see if we have an ESXi image profile already loaded by the PowerCLI. To do that, just issue get ESXi image profile command. As you can see, there is no output from such command, so that means that there is no image profile available. You can also notice that we are in our working folder where the file described above are stored. This is because we don't want to include the whole path to the file. Now, we will load the default ESXi image profile from the offline depot we have downloaded from the VMware. The command to do that is add ESX software depot and the file name of the depot file. If we check for available image profiles with get ESXi image profile, we will see that now we have one profile available. You can find there are several important properties of the profile, like who is the vendor of that profile, description, when the profile was created and so on. Now it's time to load up our custom drivers. We will use the same command as before. Now, we have the default installation profile loaded and we have also loaded our specific driver. Next step is to create our new image profile. Command to do that is new ESXi image profile. As you can see, command have several properties that we'll need to fill. First parameter is clone profile. With this, we are saying that our new profile will be cloned from standard ESXi image profile. Next parameter is a name. We need to specify what will be the name of our new profile. In our case, the name is ESXi65 Kasten. You can also specify the vendor of such image by parameter vendor. That will be displayed later in the ESXi web client, for example. Once you hit enter, New profile will be created and you will see the details of that profile. We can double check that with 
get ESXi image profile command again, and as you can see, our new profile is correctly presented. Now it's time to add our custom driver to the new image profile. To do that, we'll use command add ESX software package. There are only two parameters. First is the name of the profile to which the drivers will be added, and the second is which software package we would like to add. In our case, it's NAT IXGBE. As you can see in the VIB list, you can see our NAT IXGBE driver. Last step is to create a final ISO image of our profile that will be used for installation itself. Again, we need to use powercli command export ESX image profile and specify which profile we want to export and the format as well. In this case, we will use export to ISO parameter to get the final ISO file. Once we have a look to our working folder, we will find our new ISO installation file. All we need to do now is to plug this ISO file to our server and start the ESXi installation. I have also mentioned that I've prepared a PowerShell script that will do everything for you. You can find out the script in resources of this lecture, so let's have a look at the script. This script uses the same commands that we have used before, but instead of the step-by-step -step approach, it will do everything so you need just to run the script and you will receive ISO installation file. At the beginning of the script, you need to specify several parameters that will be used in the script. Work folder is the absolute path to your working folder with all the files. VMware offline zip is the name of the file depot that you have downloaded from the VMware. IXGBE zip is the name of our driver. New profile is the name of the profile we will use. Please note that this name will be presented in the installation wizard, so let's use something reasonable here. And finally, new ISO, which is the name of the final ESXi file. As said, we are using the same commands as before and I have also added few lines of write host that will display some status in the PowerShell window. Let's run the script so you can see how it works. There are several messages in which stage the script is right now and at the end we can check our working directory for the ISO file. As you can see, if you need to create your own ESXi installation image, it's not a hard process and all you need is to put together default installation and your custom drivers and build a final ISO image from them. In the next lecture, we'll finally install our master ESXi hypervisor and at this time without any errors about missing physical network adapters.